We, uh, I, I want to thank the mayor too because, man, we was not without water alone right. compared after we got electricity. Uh, and, a lot, and I talked to him about that, and uh, he said he just couldn't have done that if people in the community hadn't done some things that, that the men would have done, that the town people had done. Like Jerry could have uh, opened up a road, for, you know, a big old tree right behind our church at Phil. Well, Jerry could have passed so cars could travel through there and kept the town from having to do it. And um, we did, a lot of things that we did, people done, we did uh, just on our own. Um, and I, I'm real proud of Jenkins folks for pitching in and doing stuff be up, uh, beyond what we were suffering through too. Um, but that was a great thing that they did. So let's get started in this. We look in Romans. Uh, we're in Romans chapter 8 today. I've been preaching, as you know, through the book of Romans. And uh, our assignment today would be Romans chapter 8, verse 28, which is a great thing for us. I've had so many people call from all over Florida, Tennessee, uh, West Virginia, uh, Virginia, about all that. And, they seen the video of the water coming out the door. If you've not seen that, I uh, just realized that God just kind of uh, did a little cleaning up on the inside of our church. He <laughs> done <laughs> 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 on the inside of our church. <laughs> and, uh, uh, because this will help us. This in Romans chapter eight will help us understand. Why I, now, folks, I want to say something to you. I'm not shed a tear of this. Because I've been in nine of these, three hurricanes, and I've always seen God come out better than what we was. So I have not shed a tear about it. Uh, I have just rejoiced in it because we ought to think that everything that's happened to us, that God has got something for us in it. And if we as Christians don't live like that and act like that, what's, why would the world want our God? Why would, why, would, why would a lost person want, want to serve, serve a God or be involved with a God that we as His children can't rejoice there in everything that happens? So we have to look at everything like Paul did. If you've ever read about Jacob, Jacob said, Oh, the world is against me. Everything, the, Everybody's against me. Paul said, There's nothing happened to me that God's not in control of and everything and I'm just rejoicing in it and I'm content whatever state I am because he had learned over that time and we as Christians uh, if we don't have that this is a grand thing that happened to us that God has got something for us then we're missing out on what it is to be a citizen uh, of heaven so let's look in Romans chapter 8, begin with verse 28. I'm just going to do that one verse, matter of fact. Listen to what Paul says. I'm like, Don't you just love Romans? <laughs> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Amen. You think what a strong verse that is and a promise that is. And this is probably the most uh, second important thing in the book of Romans other than justification. Now, I know we have the doctrines of condemnation, justification, sanctification, and even mentioned glorification in this thing, too, in the book of Romans. But well, none of us have been glorified yet. Well, either way, none of y'all look like you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's the thing. But we are going to be glorified one of these days. And Paul said, the suffering of this world... Not compared. How, how can we even compare to the greatness that we've got, that we're going to be in? 
<coughs> the suffering that we have now, it's, it's going to be a piece of crumb cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, listen to what Paul was saying. He said, we're going to look at this about uh, being, uh, to get through something and, uh, and to have conquered. Be delivered. Give freedom in something. Okay? Uh, uh, that's the whole point of justification, folks. Is that we've been delivered? That's the whole. That's the whole thing, in in, in about justification. I, I mean, I'm gonna go through problems and trials and everything else, but ju being justified helps me to understand. Okay. See, God, what God's trying to do to me, He's trying to kill Gary Robbins. When Jesus said, "You take up your cross if you're going to be my disciple. You got to take up your cross and follow me daily." The cross was an instrument of death. I've had I've had preachers come and say, "Oh, my cross is my deacons and everything." You know, I've never had this much trouble with deacons. I've been in ministry since 1975. I've never had no problem with deacons. I'm not going to. I just tell Jesus on them. Yes. <laughs> Daughter, <Yeah. laughs> and and go on. That they're they're sheep on it. I've never had this much problem with church members. I've never had this much problem with lost people. I've never had, well, I've had this much problem with my family. <laughs> I mean, that's the only people gives me problems because I've got to live with them. But uh, we can see that, that what God's trying to do in our life as a Christian to get us to die out of ourself. He's trying to get us to die out of that. And that's what the cross was for. It was, it was made, made for, for to kill us, to that old sinful that was in us before we got saved it still, it still lingers in us and we still that's why we need the God's word that's why I need to be around Christian people to help me correct me uh, and use God's word that's what it's for uh, and we learn that in the Bible so let's learn something today about this about problems first of all he says and we know that all things work together for good to I'm just going to stop right there because we, there's a limitation to God's being working out for the good. And we're going to see there's two limitations to it uh, about what it is, okay? So then he, here, because the weight of trials come down on us, it could discourage us. There's no anyone in here that doesn't have some kind of trial on their life. Either you've just come out of one or you're going into one. Okay, if you just come out of a trial, guess what? You got nothing to go into, because God's not through it. There used to be a song that little kids sang, uh, "He's still working on me." Remember that? Make the moon and the stars and Jupiter, uh, Jupiter's and Mars. Or something. Anyway, I don't know what he goes. Like. <laughs> but uh, uh, he, that's what that's what God's trying to do in my life. I got news for you. That's what He's trying to do in your life. So how do I deal with things like a flood? How do I deal with sickness? Uh, when I get, I, I love when I go down to take my treatments and stuff. I've not lost a pound. Matter of fact, I've gained weight since they got this cancer on me and done all these treatments on me. I've been taking treatments for two years, and I have no pain. I have, and I go in bouncing in like a Baby rooster, you know, and they say, they say, and when they see me coming. Now, it's not as bad as what they do to me at Walmart. Call oh. me God, because they say, "Oh God, here he comes." Uh, it's not that bad, but they, they, they. They wave me in, come on in, you know, on it. I don't even have to hardly sign up. They sign, they see me coming. The woman goes, I got you sign in. She just signs me an amen. And they said, Mr. Rowe, we wish all of our patients would come in. I said, listen, I belong to God. I don't know. And amen. through this sickness, I've got to witness to people that I would have never got to see before. I've got to share the gospel with them. But what if I went in there like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got this cancer. I don't know what I'm going to do. See, here she says, I wish all her patients would act like that. <clears throat> because she, she does have patients. The doctor does have patients. There's this patient who just worried every second about her life. Well, that, that's not a good witness. 
So Paul's trying to encourage us to be a, a good witness because we're not careful. We can let things discourage us. And we're not just humans, folks. We're citizens of heaven. Mm -hmm. Assume that position. I'll never forget an older preacher one time come and told me. I said this to him. He said, what are you doing this next weekend, uh, Brother Gary? And I said, i got to go preach down at so-and-so's church. Oh, you you got to go. Yeah, i got to go. Oh, you have to. Oh, you got to go. It took him about ten times saying that before I realized he's trying to tell me something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slow. You know, I'm done, but I'm not plumb done. And I finally called him. And I said, I'm sorry, Brother Hodges. I'm, I, he said, why would you say you got to go? Why don't you say, man, I get to go. Amen. Praise God, God sent me down there mm -hmm. with a message for somebody. Changed my whole life about thinking about, about that. Anyway. So we learn from that, okay? I want, if you got the book of James in your Bible, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 6, listen to what, what a great thing that James writes. <clears throat> he says, Now, brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That is trials there. That's the right word for trials. Why would I count joy falling, having a church building flooded or having cancer or, or seeing somebody suffer? Why would I have joy in that? There's a difference in being having joy and being happy. I'm not happy about a lot of things. There's a lot of things that just kind of get, you know, make me unhappy. But I'm not going to let it rob my joy. Mm. I have a son, could, if I would, if I could let him rob my joy mm -hmm. in the Lord. Yeah. I could let this flood rob my joy in the Lord. And see, that's the difference. There's a difference in having joy because why? That all rests upon my justification with Jesus Christ. Remember the disciples got, uh, Jesus sent some disciples out. One time they come back rejoicing. Oh, even the demons are subject to it. He said, don't rejoice over that. Rejoice that your name is in heaven. You know why he would say that? He knew that one day the disciples say, Demon, be ye gone, and they wouldn't be gone. Mm -hmm. He knew that one day the disciples say, Be ye healed, and they wouldn't be healed. Mm -hmm. But that taken away from our salvation is never can be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. settled. Yeah. Jesus done paid that price for me. Hallelujah. So that's settled. So that I can rejoice in that. Uh, I can rejoice in Jesus Christ what He's done. So He says, Count it all joy. We'll look and see why. Knowing this, now see, Paul says, knowing that all things work out for the good, James said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, patience is not just putting up with something. It's not just saying, well, I'll wait for that to pass, give it time, and it'll change. No, that's not patience. That could be on the border of stubbornness. Okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, just being stubborn. Patience is learning how to deal with something. It's learning how to deal with it. That's what patience is. Patience, you, you know, I don't know about y'all, but my, I remember the first time I ever went to a bank. My dad, I was 10 years old. He got out of the Veterans Hospital in Roanoke to come home, and he was going to take me to the bank and help me get a little savings account started. I'd never been in that bank before. Back then, the bank bank people were way up here above the people. Do mm -hmm. y'all remember how the banks used to be? You come in and everybody had an up I guess they did that so the crooks couldn't jump over the counter or something. <laughs> but anyway, for a little kid, that was humongous. Mm -hmm. And everybody in there was always fancy dressed and mm -hmm. always did anything. And I was nervous and, and I was scared about going in there and everything. And Dad said, now, it's going to be all right. Dad goes in there, everybody speaks to my dad. They know my dad and mother real well. And everybody's speaking to them and everything else. And I got calmed down and everything. And over time, I learned to go in there by myself, put my deposit in, do the, everything I was going to do as a kid. Mold grass, I'd take the money, put it in there and do that. And when I went to get that out not too long ago, you remember those books that you had? To, they, the little black books or red books or green books, depends on what bank you went to. Yeah. I handed that to a teller. I said, I need to close this account out. What's this? 
<laughs> I said, it's my savings account book. Never seen one. <laughs> I don't know what this is. She had to call some people over and they got to go over and laugh. He said, yeah, that we had them out in years. I said, well, y'all been stamping it? <laughs> I said, I do have money in here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I need to close that out. <laughs> uh, that's how long it was. I mean, I, uh, but you learn patience. You learn how to deal with something. You learn how to overcome it and get through it. Listen to this. If you have a, a burr under your saddle and you don't get it out, Every time you ride and have to go on somewhere, it's not going to be good. So the best thing to do is overcome something, then you'll have a free ride. You'll be delivered from it. If you just see, here's what we pray: God deliver us from this. He may do it, but He may want you to go through it. The children of Israel had to suffer for a long time for another generation to learn how to follow the Lord. When they got over there, they had five years of war. And don't ever think that the promised land is heaven. Because if it is, and I get to heaven, I got to do a fight giants and fight battles, y'all want to be with me. Because I'm going to have a sword in each hand, that little boy said. That's what he calls a sword. He said, a sword. He come to my house there and seen that big giant sword I had. And he said, well, that's a big old sword there. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about at first. Then I realized what he was saying. But I won't have one in each hand. All you got to do is get behind me. I'm not taking any prisoners. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be swapping and swapping until I can't do it no more. But we're not going to have that in there. We're not going to be fighting that there. We're not going to have any wars to fight up there. Jesus is going to come back and just with his mouth going to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. He's just going to speak and it's going to be that. Okay, trying to fail. But let patience have her perfect work. Now, that's where that's where it is right there, getting all the way through it. You gotta let you gotta let this have its perfect work. Does anybody here know the what tomorrow's gonna hold? We don't do. So I gotta trust God and He does. I can't believe God knows what tomorrow's gonna hold. So I got to I got to begin to keep dealing. I can't just I couldn't sit down there and just say, well, no. You heard about the guy in the flood and he, uh, he was sitting on his porch and a, a canoe come down and a guy goes over to his porch and said, come on, get in this canoe and I'll, I'll get you to safety. The oh, Lord's going to save me. Don't worry about it. The Lord's going to take care of me. When the water got up and he got up higher and his, a bigger boat had come by and he said, come on, get in this boat and, and, I, and we'll take you to safety. And, oh, don't worry about me. The Lord's going to save me. Well, it got so I had to get up on the house. Helicopter come, they're shouting down at him, and he's going, I guess I'll be all right. Lord's going to save me. Well, he drowned. Me. He gets to heaven and he says, Lord, I thought you were going to take care of me. He said, Well, I said you can do in a boat and a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see, we have to understand that yeah. there's some things we have to do, yeah. you know, and we, we got we to gotta step out on that. We can't just think, Well, Lord's just going to take care of me. I know that. I, I know he's going to do that. So I gotta let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect. That means mature here, that you may be uh, a mature Christian in this thing. And entire, that's a military term, meaning that you uh, they that when they camped out they had a, a complete guard all the way around them watching for enemy coming in any direction. They was the the military would camp and then they'd put put people in different places so they could watch for enemy at night. And that's what, that's when Satan comes at night at the weakest point when I'm weak when I'm when I'm spiritual weak that's when he attacks me and on that so we we can see what we have to do and it says wanting nothing that means that you see with those guards around there it helped the other people sleep rest they wasn't worried about it they wasn't they didn't you know. Um, my brother was Vietnam, and they called him Point Man. And uh, I, they, people come to uh, after he got out. People come to uh, is Point Man live here? Well, we didn't know who that was. We'd say we don't know who that is. Uh, all they knew him was Point Man. And so one guy come there, and I said, "What? 
Why are y'all looking for appointment? Well, we're looking. I said, do they have another name? Yeah, they call him. I said, that's my brother. Why are y'all paying appointment? Because he volunteered every time. And I said, brother, what'd you do that for? He said, I trust nobody else in my life. <laughs> I mean, he said, no, no way. I, I didn't want to trust nobody else in my life. On it, so that's what it is. Then it says in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, okay, what do we do? We need wisdom. Now, wisdom is better than knowledge. There's a lot of things I know, but I don't have a lot of wisdom in. Wisdom is higher than knowledge, okay? So wisdom is knowing how to do in the right way. Did you know you can say something and it be right, but in, it, you can say it in the wrong way? The Bible says, speak the truth. It says, speak the truth in what? Love. Love. Unless people love you, it don't make no difference what you say to them or how, how true it is, unless they believe that you love them. And it don't make a difference. So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and that breath not a one hold back. Okay? And it shall be given him. But notice the condition of this giving. It says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. That means if, if, if you're going to trust God about just when everything's going good and not trust Him when things are going bad, why should He give you wisdom on how to handle things that's bad? Because see, you're not trusting Him. You're just kind of tossed back and forth. You're, you're, you're like that wind. You're at a high point, low point, high point, low point. So then we, we look at that. All things work together for the good. Okay? Now, when it says all things in that verse 28, it means that we have to believe that God is ruling all things. Okay? That He's ruling it. That He's in control of it. On it. Um, and then it says work together for the good. That's a present action term. It means it's continually doing God is continually doing the all right, the working out together for the good because I don't know all what's going to come out of this. We don't know whose lives we're going to touch in this. We don't know what lost person that we might reach in this. We don't we don't know how better off we're going to be until the dust settles and the, you know and, and the smoke clears. So I've had a lot of things, and all of us could say this. You've had things that happened to you that you didn't understand and it was terrible and why did it happen and everything else. Then years later you find out why it happened. You see God's hand in it. You see? And th that, what he's talking about there, that he, it's a guiding, it's control guiding, arranging and influence, creating, eliminating. God can create something and eliminate it. Hey, that's what we have to understand that what God can do and it's continue, he's continually doing that in our life. Uh, I had a a preacher, uh, he came to me one day and he said, if God rests on seven day, that means he's not doing anything. What? What? <laughs> uh, he rested from his work, but he's still involved in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Psalms tells us that. Psalms 1 tells us that. That he knows the way of the righteous. He, know, he, he knows our way. That means he's involved. We're knowing that means he's involved in it. He said it's it's a relationship that he has with him. I'm still dependent upon God today. Um, uh, then it says for the good, the word good. I mean, all things work together for the for the good. I just want to work on the good it means the ultimate good. Did you know that the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God? It didn't say that every gift comes from God. It says every good and perfect gift. Sometimes you better be careful what gift you get. It may be a Satan hand in their mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had to be careful about, uh, as a pastor, going to a church. Sometimes Satan opens up the door. I've had to be careful about that. I, I, I just went to the first church I ever pastored. Uh, I shouldn't have been there, but I was young and I didn't know. I didn't know no different. I didn't know what to do. I didn't. 
they they said we voted you in as pastor. Oh, you did. <laughs> I mean, I've been filling in there for like three months, and one Wednesday night they they said, uh, "Well, I'll we'll tell you, we're gonna vote you in as our pastor Sunday. You start pastoring here." Oh, I didn't say no. I didn't. I thought, well, God opened that door, you know, and everything. But I hadn't prayed about it. I hadn't really thought about it. And best thing ever happened to me <coughs> because it got me down on my knees before I went in was else. I won't tell you that much right now. I know what, from that point on in words that's when I knew that's exactly where God wanted me and come whatever come couldn't get me out of that, okay? But notice the limitation in this verse, in these promises. There's a limitation in it that we have to look and see. He said, he's, we're talking about all things work together for the good to them that what? Love God. <clears throat> so you have to believe that you love God mm -hmm. and then, then you can say, well, if I, if I love God, then whatever happened, God is my Father. He's taking care of me, so what, I don't have to worry about it. about it. Then I just have to deal with it coming. And then also, called according to His purpose. You know how church, you know what makes churches grow or not grow? When churches don't believe they have the purpose that that's what God's called them to do, and they lose the focus on that God has placed them in a community to reach the lost, to make disciples, and to grow, then a church quits growing. Mm -hmm. But if a church, when I was at Clear Creek, I had to go around and visit churches that was moving through, and I had to do a report, mm -hmm. because I got two, two degrees there, one from religious education, one in theology. Mm -hmm. Religious education, three, uh, Professor Hunter sent me, sent us around to churches that was growing and some that wasn't. And we'd ask that question, uh, is this what you think, think that God's called you here? No, I like the youth department. It's the only reason I come here. I like the parking uh, area, the easy part. We couldn't find ten people in any churches that we did that said, did we believe that God's called us here, <laughs> called us to be a member here, <clears throat> called us to serve God here, and was excited about doing it. Mm. The churches that we seen growing was this. You could pull up in the parking lot and somebody met you out there because you know what? They felt that was a calling mm -hmm. for them to be out there meeting people that was coming. Mm -hmm. Susan and I pulled in a, ch in a church uh, parking lot. Well, first we pulled up around these people out there flagging us where to go. And they said, are you new here? Okay, look, follow this yellow line. It got us closer to the church. And everybody we run into, and I'd say... Uh, do you believe God's called you? Oh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm excited about serving God here. This is what God wants. And the churches that were going and blowing and doing, the people felt like they had a calling there. Mm -hmm. And once we lose that, then we begin to, we, we, we can't hear God. We can't hear God. Mm -hmm. I got used to hearing my mother hollering at me so much that she could holler sometimes, and I said, no, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I could just be down, you know, just down the creek, just a little ways. And that guy would come, Gary, you, your mama's hard at me. Ah, oh, she does that all the time. I go up and see. I, did, I didn't hear her. Because you know what? I quit, I cut her off. And I wouldn't hear her hard. I wouldn't hear her hard, Gary. I wouldn't hear that. Everybody else in the community did. <laughs> and, but see, that's what you, we get. We, we can... God can be calling, we won't hear him. Because we're not focused on the calling. We had one major rule at our house, you better be in before dark. That's the only major rule I'll listen to. I took a whipping for the rest of them, it was okay. I mean, my mother's real little, she couldn't even hurt us. We'd act like she hurt us, just make her feel better. But we you, you, you get away from God's focus. If you don't believe that God's called you for a purpose mm -hmm. at Emmanuel Baptist Church, then, then you're missing the whole point of what it is about being justified. Okay. Guess what? Yes, I'm through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, again, we just want to pause and thank you for this day, for many blessings of life and what you mean to us. 
God, you're good to us all the time. Not just some of the time, not just the there are good times, but also through the bad times, God. I don't know what you're uh, going to do here and finish up this. We, we have no clue. But we know this. We've surrendered to you. We depend upon you to help us get through this. Give us the strength to do those things that you would lead us to do. Give us the wisdom to hear and be obedient and know what to do, when to do, and how to do. Again, I thank you for these dear folks that have never known this side of heaven, what a blessing they are to me, and I thank you for this home that has opened up to us that we, as your church, Emmanuel Baptist Church, could meet here in this, in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Jeff, you, you got anything you want to share with us? Before you all leave, you're fine. Before you all leave, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a picture of you, like like where you are, so I can send that back to my church. Um, and uh, just want you to know that we love you. And uh, I saw pictures, Leslie and I cried for two days. And we just knew that you all be forgotten, and we wasn't gonna have it. And so we got on the phone, we got to talking to people. So, I've got I got forty seven hundred dollars in checks written directly to your church. Um, I've got a total of ten thousand plus dollars that I brought with me um, that we're going to use to purchase supplies and needs and just love on people and share Jesus. Um, and just being frank with you, I didn't broadcast it as much as I could have because I didn't have no way to bring it. Uh, Brother Asa, some of you have met him, he's my director of missions. Uh, I jokingly refer to him as the Great White Father. Some of you know history, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and you used to be the Great White Father. This, this, this is your substitute. Uh, I thought it was probably my heart. Uh, but anyway, we uh, uh, had a lot of support. Um, I've got, um, they say, John Michael's coming. Everybody remembers John Michael. He's coming this afternoon to help us. I don't know if he's bringing anybody with him, but I've uh, got a guy supposedly coming up from Georgia to help us. I've got uh, over in John Michael's area, there's a box truck coming with supplies. I'm meeting in the morning early with a, a church in Kingsport. They've got a trailer. We're going to load it down and bring stuff. Uh, but uh, we're here to serve you. Uh, and uh, we love you. And we'll do whatever we can to help you. And uh, I praise God that you've got a good man here as your pastor. Uh, to, to lead you and show you the way, um, but um, officially our team's going to be here Monday through Friday, um, and we're going to be just doing whatever we can to help. Um, you're going to do a Q&A. I don't know what you got planned. I don't want to step on your toes, but uh, you all know better than I do what your needs are, and so be sharing that with him or share that with me because, like I said, in the morning, I'm going to go spend some money. And I'm going to buy stuff that's what's needed here. I've got a list of things that people have said, but that list has changed. I've been down at the warehouse a couple of days now. Um, so help us help you. Um, and again, it's so good to see you all. Missed you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jay.